Hey y'all, it's me, Brandy, host of the Our Self Love Story podcast. And today, as always, we are on, we're taking another step to falling deeper in self-love. And I have another guest today from out of town, another virtual interview <laughs> that I'm very excited about. <clears throat> So today's special guest is Chanel Renee, and Chanel Renee is an award-winning fine artist and mixed media painter all the way from New Jersey, right? That's right. Yes. Okay. That's so exciting. Well, welcome, Chanel, and thank you so much for um, being a part of my podcast. Yeah, Brandy, though, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Yes. Yeah, so I mentioned like at the beginning, like this is another virtual interview um, and and you are another person who is um, like outside of my family and friends who I'm um, recording an episode with. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I'm just glad to, you know, be able to connect with other people. Um, that was like the the goal really of my podcast. Like I wanted to connect with like like-minded people and I felt like I had a lot to say um but I didn't have I didn't have at that time I didn't have a community of people um to kind of express those things with so I'm glad that you know we get to discuss today yeah no absolutely um you know we were talking before I just love your platform all about self-love I think it's not always an easy thing um, especially for Black women to um, give to ourselves. And it's just really great that you just opened up the door to have those conversations and hopefully it can, you know, help and inspire other people. Yes, yes, I agree for sure. Okay, so um, I started this in my last episode and we're going to continue today with the first segment of the show when me and you both answer the question, uh, when was the last time you showed yourself love? Hmm. That's a great question. So I'm um, just thinking back. Uh, most recently, I did this um, art installation and it was my first time doing it. And I had a lot of high expectations for myself and I have a tendency to be hard on myself. So I'm literally at the place and I'm trying to figure this out. Like, how am I going to like hang this like huge monstrous um, board on the wall? And I didn't completely cry, but I started to like tear up. Like I was just mm -hmm. so frustrated with myself. And before I let myself get to that point, I like, I reined myself in. I was like, look, Chanel, like, this is your first time doing something like this. You should just be really proud that you're doing it. Like, let this go. Like, it'll work itself out. And I just took a moment with myself. I took a deep breath and just, you know, allow those feelings of like fear and anxiety to come up. But yet at the same time, like give myself space for, you know, some grace as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good to hear, especially when you said like allowing feelings of fear and anxiety to like to come up, but to not let them like overpower you. Um, that's something that I have learned over time and kind of start enjoying a little bit like doing stuff that I'm scared of doing um so I think that's important to to understand that you could be scared but at the same time you could still do it you know like just because you're scared that doesn't have to you know overpower it like you said your emotion of being grateful that you have that opportunity or being proud of yourself like you gotta be fearful and all these other things at the same time, but your fear doesn't have to stop you. So I'm glad that you, you know, that's a good experience for you to have for sure. Yeah, definitely. It definitely was a moment for growth and learning. And we also kind of talked about this before, like, like the self-love, it's like a journey. It's like an ongoing, it's never mm -hmm. something you like fully master. Like you have to kind of like, like train yourself to like remind yourself to like be be your best friend, be your best advocate. So mm -hmm. 
Yes, yes, I agree. Um, for me, the last time that I showed myself love, I would say, um, like for the past couple of days, I've been like a little emotional, um, just because I like, um, I came into contact with somebody who kind of mm, brings up like a lot of emotions for me. So I have been thinking about myself when I was like a teenager and when I was in college and just trying to take the time to understand who I was at that time and not be so like trying to be understanding of who I was at that time and um, trying to make sense of my mindset at that time and um, my emotions and just where I was mentally at that time and trying to under taking the time to understand where I was and to understand that like you know I was young at that time and since then I have learned a lot and by taking the time to just understand who I was as a younger person, it's making, <laughs> it's making, um, just me have a better understanding of myself and to learn from, from who I was when I was a teenager, you know, trying to date and having things not work out and being like really sad about that. <laughs> and, um, and, under, just understanding who I was when I was young and, you know, moving forward and talking to myself like, um, like you, you were at this place at that time, but you're not, you don't have to continue to be at that place anymore. And it was a reason why you were at that place. And yeah, so I'm just taking time, um, since, since I had that interaction to just, just try to understand myself more um, as a young, younger person. And yeah. So um, yeah, that's the yeah, last no, time I showed that's, myself. That's more. really, yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's like you said, it, it's a progress, it's a process and it takes time, but I have been doing that um, for the past couple of days. So. So yeah, I, I was kind of getting choked up. Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't, I didn't expect that, you know, but that's really how I was feeling. So, yeah, no, no, it's kind of great. Like, in terms of like things come up and it impacts us in different ways. And that's why, I, like, in, you know, hearing your story, like, I just, you know, wanted to give you that space to, like, I know it's going to come. Be like, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and just sharing that. So, yeah, so that's the time, last time that I showed myself love. Um, it's still a process, but I'm just trying to understand younger Brandy and just be like understanding to her and to kind of help her not be in that space. And because younger Brandy is still in me, so yeah. So now today, I hear you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so today our topic is being vulnerable as an artist. And I'm excited to talk about this. Um, I, I'm not like I kind of consider myself an artist in a way. Like I don't I don't rap, you know, I don't do music, I don't do art, but I don't think that I'm an artist, but I can definitely relate to the vulnerability of artists and um especially like musicians at least musicians that i like um i like people who share their story so like people like like dmx like i fell in love with dmx um like a little bit before he passed away and like you know rappers like j cole or even if i don't love the rapper if they just have a couple songs where they kind of express themselves it makes me really you know drawn mm -hmm. to them so on this podcast, you know, I'm talking, I don't know who listens, you know, I have listeners all over the world. I don't know these people at all. And I'm coming on here and, you know, telling about how I feel like I have low self-esteem and how I'm trying to love myself, just being very vulnerable with 
straight, absolute strangers or even family members and friends who, you know, come on the show and listen and just being very open about my feelings. So I'm not an artist per se, but, you know, I can relate to that aspect of, you know, sharing with people. So for you, yeah, how, no, I, yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to echo, like you were saying, like, just being vulnerable and putting yourself out there. Like, it's just a scary feeling because you don't know how others will receive that. Um, So it's kind of that ongoing battle in terms of is what I'm doing, do I feel that it's benefiting more people than the people that that just don't get it and kind of you know, just kind of focus on that. Um, But it also helps me. So at the same time, like just like the creating of the art, like being in the studio, that's just a really good feeling. Um, And then like, I have to like strengthen my muscle (laughs) when it comes to like, like you were saying, like sharing the story, like behind the piece or like, or, you know, why I create art and things like that. So that's something I like constantly have to work on for myself so yeah okay wait so before i kind of skipped ahead a little bit so before we talk about um the being vulnerable as an artist um i want you to just share a little bit about your mission as an artist because i was looking on your website and I, i really love your mission but i think you could explain it better than i can so can you just share like you know as an artist what your mission is yeah, sure. Um, I paint portraits uh, mostly of um, Black females um, with the idea is that it not only reflects who I am as a Black woman, but also just amplifying the voices of other Black women just to be seen um, in a positive way, showing their beauty, their inner and outer beauty, and just kind of like allowing us to take up space. So just allowing us to just be, because, you know, I didn't go to art school, I'm self-taught, but, you know, if you just look back at like older art, there's not a lot of, you know, people like us, like that are depicted in art. So I just want to be part of, you know, the women, not just women, but, you know, I would just want to be part of that artist move movement that is, you know, shedding a light on Black women and just allowing them to be seen and heard Um, along with other, you know, there's a lot of great artists out there that are doing the same thing. Um, And, you know, collectively, I feel that it really helps, um, you know, bring, you know, Black women up. And um, that's really, you know, why I create um, and why I, the subjects that I um, create as well. Yeah, I love that. And my favorite part of your mission is the part where you say you want to show Black women as just like, just being, like just being who they are and not like anything, it, you know, just being. I really, I really do like that. Um I was watching something on TV. I think it was um, like Mary J. Blige. She had like a um, a special, I think, on a Prime Video or something where they were like showcasing her, or they were talking about her album, her My Life album. And I think that's what I was watching. I really don't know. But somewhere in there, they were talking about how Mary J. Blige, through her art or through her music, she was able to kind of represent um, like young black urban women as just as just that as just young black urban women, the experience of a young black urban woman. And when he said that, it was so like it was so simple, but. To me, it was, it meant a lot because he didn't say like uh, young women, like he didn't say anything that insinuated that the black experience was like ghetto or it was undervalued or it was something negative. He just explained, he just described it as an experience, as just them being who they are, um, not defining them by their environment or you know, how they wear their hair, you know just saying that this is their experience as young women in 
you know, an urban area. And so I love that you are also just showing, you know, have a mission to just show black women as just who they are and not putting any negative connotations to it. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, you know, it's, I, and it's so interesting. Like I was always just kind of, when I was learning how to paint, I always knew I wanted to do portraits. I always knew that I wanted the subject to be, you know, black females, like, and everything else I just kind of figured out, but you know what I mean? Like that was something before I really, you know, figured out how I kind of knew my why um, before I even started. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how long, you, I know you said that you're self-taught. So how long have you been doing art? or painting? Oh, wow. So, so it's 2023. So I've been painting professionally going into my third year. So okay. not that long of a time. Um, before that I worked, um, in digital marketing. So, um, I'm, you know, it was definitely a career shift and, um, a different focus than I ever imagined. I, I didn't take art in high school. Like I wasn't that art kid. So, mm -hmm. um, I just kind of did it as a, at first I did it as a way just to like, um, as a creative release, I was just like looking for different things I could do, um, to like separate just from my day. Um, and, and then with the pandemic, it just gave me a lot of time to, you know, really, practice and learn different types of skills and with all that it kind of made you like realize like you know what do I really want to do you know why wait so that was kind of the kick that I needed to really make an effort to like get my art out there do shows and things like that so okay okay yeah that's that's awesome so as far as like being like how does like, how does that play out in your life where you're just being, if that, if that makes sense? Yeah, no, um, it does, like, it's funny. So, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough, you know, I can work from home. So it's just kind of like being in the sense of like, even though this was video recorded as like, I mean, you're relaxed too, but like that sense of like, oh, I got to like change how I would normally, normally dress on a, you know, we're doing this on a Saturday, you know what I mean? Like just kind of showing up and despite the location, like I'm going to make sure that I dress comfortably and style like for me, not for other people, or I'm going to wear my hair the way I want to wear my hair. If I still have my, you know, two strand twist in, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. on a zoom call. And especially if I'm on a call with, you know, like a mix of different people from different cultures, like it's okay. Like, I'm just gonna, this is how I am that day, you know, um, and not really worry about it. So as far as being like, I'm just leaning into like, this is who I am. This is how I express myself. And that shouldn't be, you know, and it, you know what I mean? That shouldn't be an issue. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel the same way. Lately, I've been feeling like me and my guests have been like on the same page. And I feel like that, <laughs> I feel like that now too. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel the same way as far as just like being sometimes like when I'm at home just by myself, sometimes I wonder like, is that, the, my real self because you you don't have to put on at all when you're like at home by yourself but as soon as you step out or as soon as I step out into the world or in front of other people you know I do things a little little bit differently so sometimes I do wonder that like is the version of everybody when they're just at home and it's nobody with them is that is that really who we are I, I don't know but I, I wonder that um but I also think um, you have to learn to be like who you really are. Um, because from what I'm learning now, um, what I've noticed is that like me as a person, 
I'm influenced or I have been influenced by um, obviously what I see other people do. Um, that's just how you learn. You learn from, you know, watching others do. Um, and as I'm getting, you know, as I'm paying more attention, I notice that there's things that I like or that I'm interested in that I haven't necessarily, I don't necessarily see other people do. And so um, I, I believe that you have to learn to be, you have to learn what you like and who you are so that you can be that. But when, until you do that, you might not be your full, your real, your true self just because you haven't taken the time out to kind of figure that out. Like, you know, what your interests are, how you want to live, who you want to be around how you want to wear your hair, um, you know, how you talk, whatever, whatever the case is, I think you have to learn to be that and really make an effort to be that. At least for me, maybe some people, it just comes more naturally. But for me, I'm learning how to, how to be because I have to learn, like, who I really am. Yeah, no, actually, I totally agree with you. I mean, if we had this conversation I would say maybe five years ago, the answer would probably not be the same, you know, as far as being and having that comfort of being regardless of where I am. Um, so it's definitely, it's been for me like a muscle to build um, kind of like, you know, not hearing the voices, but also like you say, kind of figuring out what being means, you know, for yourself. Um, so no, I could totally relate to that. And for me, being has evolved, um, you know, throughout my life. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, for example, like when I was growing up, um, like my mom, she's like, um, she's like a very quiet person. And I kind of picked that up as a, I think I, I picked that up from her. I, I'm also like to myself a lot and like, I can't be very quiet. But as I got older, I kind of realized like, I'm not, I don't think I'm as shy as, how my mama is, but I have kind of been like that because I think I saw her be like that. But as I got older, I kind of realized like I don't think I'm as shy as how I thought I was, or I'm not as nervous to do things as I thought I would have been. Like I actually kind of like doing this stuff. Like I like going on adventures, like doing stuff that's kind of like, not like too scary or not like too out there, but I kind of like these things. and before I kind of took the time to realize that I was kind of, you know, you know, I thought that I was one way and I'm realizing that I'm a different way. But to say that it's not to say that, you know, my mama being shy is, is bad. It's not, that's just who she is, but I just kind of have to realize that that's not necessarily like who I am and how, you know, my personality. So um, so yeah, let's talk about being vulnerable as an artist. So I actually have a question. So since you do paint portraits of like others, how do you show or do you um, like express vulnerability with the style of art that you do? Hmm. So um, I do do commissions, but a lot of the work that I do are based on just photographic references. And for me, like, I usually select it based on like their eyes. Um, I like when a woman is like looking directly out. Um, so that usually plays into it, but not always. Um, but it's usually just a look or an expression that I'm really drawn to. And then as far when it comes to like the painting, it's like a mix of realism and abstraction. So in my background, it's a lot of like brush strokes and color. Um, but then like, you know, the figure is very like, you know, you know, you're looking, you know, at, at a female form. Um, but yeah, it's just like, like kind of my way of like bringing out the inner emotion or let other people interpret what that might be as they look at the painting. Okay, I see. So, so you use your, like, you use the characters or the people that you draw to express the emotion through the painting. Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. okay, that makes sense. So now I feel like I should like go back 
and look at the art and see like what type of emotions that I, I get from the different pictures. Cause I didn't look at it like that. I kind of looked at it as like, Oh, like these, I like the colors or I like, you know, her hair or how she looks, but not necessarily the emotion. So I'm going to take another look and see what I, what I get from that. So as an artist, do you ever feel like there's a, a thing, a such thing as like oversharing? Um, I mean, yes. I mean, for me, yes. I think mm -hmm. it all depends on the in individual. Um, right now, like when I share, it's really about my art or you'll see me in my studio. But I think kind of what we touched on earlier is like that side of like the story side of like putting that out there is where I run into my difficulty. Um, and actually, you know, like strengthening my muscle by being on your podcast, um, Brandy, mm -hmm. is definitely one way to help with that. Um, but yeah, like that's the thing. Like I can put it in words, like, you know, I, if I want to put it in like, a, you know, IG post or something like that, but like to get on, um, say do a live or, you know, something where it's like, you know, me talking, that's something like I, I know I need to work on, but as far as like the oversharing, like, I think I set my own boundaries as far as like, it's not going to be too personal, like relationship stuff or like things like that. I don't really like bring up um, as it relates to my art. So I think, you know, finding other ways of connection because it is about connection. Like people can look at the art and connect to that. But I know that they also want to connect to me. And I feel like my strongest relationships are people that I know in real life or that I've, you know, connected with. Um in different ways or even like D DMing people and, you know, they know me more than just, you know, what they see. So, um, but yeah, for me, I think there's definitely oversharing exists and I try to set my own boundaries, but at the same time, I don't think I'm at that point yet. <laughs> so I need to like keep, you know, giving a little more, um, you know, in addition yeah. to the art, so. Okay, okay, yeah. Sometimes I, I, I'm still trying to figure that out. Like, is this things that I shouldn't say on this podcast? Like, I don't know if I should, maybe I should say certain stuff. I don't, um, but at the same time, I do, I like to see my own progress or just my own journey. Like, I look back at older episodes and things that I said that I wanted to happen you know, have happened or I see myself or I can see myself like making progress um, for things that I said that I want it to happen. So even if with the if it seems like oversharing, I don't know if I overshare, but I do like to just, you know, to have that opportunity to look back at myself over time. So I guess it's a balance. I don't know. We'll see if anything backfires at some point. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So I know that you have done like some exhibitions like in New Jersey and um, in other places um, throughout the world internationally. Can you um, talk about how that experience was for you? Um, yeah, it's been really cool. So just to kind of not really go back, it kind of falls in line with exhibitions. So it was 2021. So I entered like my first like art show um, here in New Jersey. And I was really excited about like the pieces that I picked and, you know, I thought they were good, but this was like in my early stages of like promoting myself as an artist. And I ended up winning best of show at this, you know, at the exhibit. And that was like, it was like that boost that I needed to keep going. You know what I mean? It was like, you could hear like your family and friends say, oh, that looks good. But then to kind of have, like an outside validation, even though I'm not like big on, like I need to hear that. But for art, it was kind of like that boost of like, okay, I'm on the right track. Um, so that was a really great feeling. And then 
to keep like doing it. So, I mean, there's been a bunch of things I've applied to that I didn't get in as well as, you know, and you just keep going. So um, I like to show my work um, at different places and different themes. Um, and it's always a little like, you know, scary in terms of like the nose, but um, I've heard um, people say like, the more no's you get, like the closer you're getting to that yes, or like having the door open to more opportunity. So, um, you know, I definitely love exhibiting. It's exciting. Um, you get to connect with other artists, you get to meet people, you know, depending on what it is, if it's virtual. So the international show, it was virtual. Um, mm -hmm. And that was really great as well. Like being around like artists from all around the world, um, it's just really great, like to know that art can have impact, like globally. Is just really amazing to me. So, oh yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Um, yeah, we talked about it earlier, like just doing things that are scary. Um, it's it's kind of fun, and it, you never know what 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 can happen. I look at fear as just like as your your. I guess your brain or your body's way of just letting you know that you're doing something that you that's different or that's out of the ordinary. Like obviously you can have fear in like, you know, dangerous situations or something like that. But there's also a fear where there's nothing really you're not really in danger, but you still have fear. So that type of fear, I just look at it as your body's way of letting you know that you're doing something um something that's very different for you and something probably probably that you really have maybe always thought about doing but you just haven't done it so that's how i kind of look at it um or try to interpret it or make sense of it when you have fear so i think this is a good time for us to pull a card from the self-love deck and see what we have to talk about. Sorry you're not in person to be able to pull your own card, but <laughs> I'm like shuffling, shuffling, and then I'll just pull a card for you. So first card at the top. Um, I did this question before, so I'll do another one. Let me see. I'll do this one too. Okay. It says, what would what would you like the last chapter in your book of life to be entitled? That's a good question. Oh wow. <laughs> That's a really great great question. Hmm. Um What comes to me first, so I'll go with that. I'll say the unstoppable journey. Okay. So what what makes you pick that title? Well, it's funny because that's kind of how I view, like, okay, so I view, since I'm in my midlife, like I kind of view things on a shorter scale. I mean, obviously, you know, things happen, you don't know, you know. But that's how I view like the art because since it's happened like later in my life, I feel like I want to keep doing more or try things that I haven't tried before. Um, for example, I'm doing like a mural training program. I think it would be really cool to do public art on a like large scale. And like there's just all these things within the art space that I want to try in the, in the sense of try it. And hopefully that's something that will resonate, but there's just so many things that I kind of feel like, like I'm short on time to a certain extent. So it's just that excitement of like, yeah, like it's unstoppable. Like I just want to like keep going until, you know, the book ends, you know what I mean? So. Okay. I like that. So you said the unstoppable journey. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's kind of interesting because it's like, it says the last chapter in your book of life, but it's called the unstoppable journey. So it's kind of like, it's the last chapter, but it's unstoppable at the same time. So that's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I'm going to keep going till, like I said, till that book closes. And then Mm -hmm. also like I use journey because it's like, like the mark that my art will leave behind, like in in that sense of like, you know, you're here as you're, you know, as an embodied person and you make impacts, you know, through like, you know, conversations and your relationships. But then like, then there's this art or whatever type of like, you know, art you create, like podcasts, a book, you know, author, like those things like stay behind and like the things that those make. So it's still like that journey, like, you know, beyond my time. So I, yeah, I kind of see it that way. Okay. I like that. So for me, the first thing that popped in my head was like the ultimate adventure. Um, because for me, uh, the, the last chapter in my book of life. So I, 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 like, when I think about how I want to be like ultimately in life, I envision like a very adventurous, like, well, to me, like it feels adventurous now cause I haven't done it, but like, Things that I want to do are feel adventurous to me now. So at that point, I will be living like the ultimate adventure, like you know, maybe living in another country or you know, living in a totally different climate. You know, having a completely different diet and living like a slower life, like much slower and more like mm. secluded in a way than like the life that is that I have now where I'm like always on social media and always like in a big city. I live in Detroit. So it's like a lot of people here. So I see my life as the adventure that I have in my head. Now it will be like the last chapter where I will live out that ultimate adventure and just live that life. So that's what, that's the first thing that also popped in my head at the ultimate adventure. Wow. I love that. I love that. And then just a segue, just because you said you were from Detroit. So as we've Mm -hmm. been talking, I have family in the area. So I feel like I've been talking to my cousin the whole time because you sound like, you know what I mean? You have Uh, that sound. So, (laughs) you know, people say that it's like a Detroit accent. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I never really thought so, but maybe it is, especially if you said, you know, I remind you of family. So. Make sure that you yeah, share this that's with a, them. it's a good thing. It's a good <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love I love Detroit, um, but I also want to experience other things. So, um, so yeah, I like this question. I really do, and I like the titles that we came up with as well. Yeah, so, I know that was a really deep question. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. it was. Uh, it makes you think like think about where you are now like you say you're like midlife and uh, i'm more like i guess quarter life i'm 25 so so we're like at different places in life so you kind of think about the last chapter in a different way um so that's interesting as well because you said like you feel like like you're short on time and that's something like once you said it, I was like, oh, OK, like I can understand that. But I never really thought about that because I, I I can't really, I guess, see an end at this point because I am so pretty young. So it's just interesting how, you know, just something like your age or, you know, your experiences can kind of influence something like that. So I think this has been a very great conversation. Um, thank you so much, Chanel, for you know joining me today. And we have a very special giveaway coming soon. So Chanel is going to, as a part of the giveaway, Chanel is going to be giving out free art to a lucky subscriber. 
So in order to enter for a chance to receive this artwork, you have to be subscribed to Our Self Love Story on YouTube. I will include the link in the description so that you can subscribe. And once you subscribe, I'll do, we'll do a raffle or like a random selection, and then we'll have a winner. So thank you so much, Chanel, for, you know, offering up your artwork to the listeners for the Our Self Love Story podcast. And, you know, hopefully they are able to, you know, take away all that you put into your artwork, take that with them and, you know, have it with them forever. No, I'd love to. It's just great to like share the work and get people to experience that. So yes, that's awesome. I'm so glad to offer that. Yeah. So any, do you have any final words or anything that you would like to share before we log off today? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, as far as self-love, I see it as an ongoing journey. Um, I just feel I always kind of tap into gratitude whenever I'm feeling kind of down on myself to be able to be a professional artist and share my work. Um, you know, I definitely invite people to, you know, check out my artwork on my website, ChanelRenee.com. And you can also connect with me on Instagram at being Chanel Renee. All right. Well, that is awesome. Thank you so much. And make sure y'all stay tuned for next week's episode. Bye. Thank you, Brandy. Thank Bye. you.